My name is Chelsea Bum. I'm here to talk to you today about active versus reactive power. So we build wind turbines here at One Energy. One of the things that we do a lot of is education. And one of the questions we get quite frequently is, what is active power, what is reactive power, and what is apparent power, and why does it matter? So these are terms that are widely used in the industry. These are things that you look at when you are an energy manager for a company, when you're looking to uh, understand your billing as a residential customer, as a corporate customer, as a CNI customer, any of those things. So active, reactive, and apparent power are three types of power that are very, very confusing unless you break it down. So that's gonna be the goal of today. So active power is defined as the real power actually dissipated in a system. Reactive power on the flip side is phantom power, which flows forward and backward without doing any useful work in the system. So bringing that down to earth a little bit, let's take a look at this purely resistive load. So a purely resistive load, you're gonna see that I've put voltage here in green, current in pink. I should have started this video with a disclaimer that my handwriting is abysmal and my English teachers were never pleased. But as you can see, they peak at the same time, voltage and current peak at the same time, they go to zero at the same time. And so what, what that means is that voltage and current are in phase with one another in a purely resistive load. So now, what if we're looking at power? Now what happens when you look at power? So you're gonna take your, your current and multiply it by your voltage to get power. So what that's gonna look like you're gonna have positive power, you know, as in a purely resistive load. And so this type of representation we call active power. Now let's take a look at the flip side. So now on the flip side, let's look at a purely reactive load. So again, you've got voltage and current. They're a little out of phase from one another. And what you're going to notice is if we look at that same current verse multiplied by voltage, uh, it's going to be positive. Positive times a positive stays positive, right? So it's going to be something like, this is where that goes negative. When a negative goes negative, it becomes positive. Then you've got this. something like that. And so you're gonna notice that a purely reactive load has both positive and negative power and it goes back and forth. And so um, looking at this a little bit, just to reiterate, active power does not change direction and remains positive, whereas reactive power changes direction and is positive and negative, meaning that it goes both from source to load and load to source. So examples of some reactive loads that you're gonna see, active power is a lot easier to visualize, a lot easier to think about, but reactive power is not. So when we talk about reactive power, we're talking about things like inductors and capacitors that dissipate zero power but drop voltage and draw current, giving the impression that they do dissipate power. And so when we're talking about these things, reactive power, motors, capacitors, inductors, those are all common examples of things that draw reactive power. So we kind of showed this on that first board that we were looking at. This is what we call the power triangle. And this is where we talked about those three types of power. And so reactive power or Q, um, measured in VAR, active power, or P, measured in watts, and a pow apparent power, measured in VA, also known as S. And then the angle between um, active power and apparent power is also is called theta in this instance, 
but as impedance is the impedance phase angle sometimes you see that as z so you can use trigonometry and you can kind of solve for one another these are some formulas we're not going to go through them this is above and beyond what we want to do today but just to reiterate Active power produces electricity, heat, light, mechanical energy, and reactive power produces an AC magnetic field. And so active power, apparent power, and reactive power are only applicable in AC settings. They are not applicable at all in a DC setting. Cool, so moving on. So putting all this together, um, some final notes here. Active power is a function of dissipative elements, usually resistance. Reactive power is a function of circuit's reactance. Both active and reactive power are burdens to transmission lines. That's pretty key here, and that's gonna be one of the big takeaways. So to put all this together, what really matters is the ratio of active power to apparent power, or the ratio of reactive power to apparent power. The ratio of active power to apparent power is called your power factor. So this matters a lot when you're talking about utility billing. And so a utility is going to look at, let's say a plant's overall power factor, and they're going to say, okay, both active power and reactive power are burdens to the transmission line. So they're gonna build differently as if this were 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Uh, they're gonna build very differently if it's 0.4. It all depends on what's in the fine print of your utility bills. So at One Energy, we build on-site wind projects that interconnect physically to a customer site. What that means is we're changing, we're trying to change that load profile at the plant. So customers will still receive a bill from their primary electric utility. So we oftentimes um, net meter, but every project we've put in the ground thus far has not been a 100% producer for a plant or a facility so they have to be supplemented in some way when we talk about supplementing their utility bill we're talking about supplementing them with you know a local utility transmission distribution something along those lines so like i mentioned utilities billing is based on power factor so if a customer has a reactive power load that is high motors inductors anything that that changes the sh that that phasing between current and voltage there's a waste or burden to the electric supplier because of that reactive power. So putting this all together, understanding power factor is a key for an energy manager at any, at any major consumer. So to understand their load and billing from the utility, you need to understand power factor. To understand power factor, you need to understand active and reactive power and how it works. So hopefully this was a little bit helpful. This is a very, very, very brief tornado of an intro to it. There are years of data, years of studies, people's dissertations written on this particular subject. So have at it if you're interested. Thank you.